Hello, hello. In this coding session, we will work on creating a web page that provides a little bit of interactivity. Um, the user can uh, type in a message, a word, a phrase, and the page will return um, that word, phrase, or message in sign language. Um, this idea comes from a student in uh, my web design class. She has an idea to create an interactive web page or web app um, that does exactly this. You type in a word, type in the letters, and the page returns um, the sign language version. Um, so it's a cool idea. I'm gonna see if we can code up a proof of concept of this so that um, the student can go ahead and, and design uh, design the concept. <clears throat> um, so we're going to uh, we're going to write some PHP, I think is how we're going to do it here. So I'm in my go to web development um, software, Coda. It's um, it's an IDE that is uh, has been part of the uh, Macintosh world for a long time, many years. <clears throat> so I'm on my server now, and I'm just going to create um, a page. It's going to be a PHP page. And <clears throat> let's put a little code in. This would be the essential code that every web page would have. Let's make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> And then I'm going to preface the HTML with a code block that's going to hold my PHP. So to kind of recap this concept, <clears throat> my understanding of the concept is that the user will um, see a search box then the user will enter text into search box then the user will submit form and then the page will um, <clears throat> Collect the form and then the page will translate the form input into, um, into the sign language. And then the page will um, present the graphics. This is the basic idea. Pretty good idea. <clears throat> So to do this, we need to come up with a workflow um, for how the page is going to work. And it might look like this. Again, um, I'm just sort of improvising here. This is not necessarily best practice. This is um, 
coding to solution as fast as possible so that um, the project designer can you know go ahead and move the project forward so um, possible workflow might look like this um, present form let's see HTML present form <clears throat> and then um, set up form to return input to page set up PHP handler to process form input <clears throat> set up a PHP function to let's see what do we want to do we're going to take this form input um, and then we're going to break it up into the different possible characters that could um, have sign language so we're going to set the page function to um, parse the input phrase into characters <clears throat> then map the characters to corresponding graphics that sounds good and then um, from there we're going to take the graphics um, and present them so that makes sense <clears throat> It's important in interactive design to to be able to visualize and articulate the sequence of events. This is our sequence of events. All right. So let's see if we can start coding this up. I'm going to start with the form. I'll go down here into my HTML and we'll create a form. Um, <clears throat> We'll choose the post method. There are two methods, of course, with forums. They can um, use the post method or the get method. I keep doing that. Okay, so we have our form. I'm going to create the phrase um, input type text. Um, we'll call it phrase and. Um, I guess that's all we need for that. And we'll create a button. All right. So that's our form. Um, let's take a look. All right. Um, set this whole thing up on one of my sandbox servers so so that we can test and this is the um, the outcome of the code so far there's a form right here it's the input box and the let's make this bigger the input box and the submit button which are these two and it doesn't do anything yet the form does submit but it goes back to the page and does nothing because the page is not doing anything with this so let's do something with this um, let's go up here into our PHP and create our first little section of PHP where we handle the user input. Um, we'll create the variable. We know it's a post element and we know that it's coming from a form 
where the uh, the field is named phrase. So I'm just going to name it phrase and let's mark all this up. Um, we're going to register variable for the incoming phrase. Okay. And so if this is enough to test, um, I could actually just go down here and echo this back. Save that. Let's refresh. So now if I type in a search phrase, um, all right, it should show up here, which is it, it's doing that. So this, this web browser page is just demonstrating that, you know, I've created a whole little circuit of, um, of information moving through this page coming into the form. Um, when I push the button, it's actually refreshing the page and passing this form input back into the page. And up here at the top of my PHP, the first thing it does is it's looking for um, post input with uh, a key name of phrase, it turns it into a variable. And then back in the HTML, it outputs that variable phrase. Um, so, so far, so good. Our circuit's working. Now we can actually create a little bit of logic here um, because we actually don't want to see a word. We want to see pictures. So um, if I chose Apple was the, uh, was the sample input in the conversation I had with um, the student earlier today. So the idea is if I put in Apple, um, the page would receive the word Apple um, and then break up this word into uh, the different characters, A-P-P-L-E, and then instead of showing the text, it would show a picture of sign language. So there's a couple things I need to do here at this point in the code right up here. Once we've got the variable from the search box, we need to... Um, we need to break up the phrase, the word, the phrase, whatever it is that the person has typed in, into individual characters so that we can evaluate those characters individually. So in PHP, we can use a function called um, uh, string split. It would look like this. If I said, let's take the phrase, And let's split the string into um, characters. The PHP function looks like this. Um, okay, so I'm simply saying, hey, this phrase, which was defined up in the previous line, we're going to take it and that's it. And then we're going to run it through this function called string split. Um, and you just would have to know, you'd have to know enough PHP to know you could do this. Um, if we go to php.net, <clears throat> the definitive authoritative source of PHP code, I could search, hello, okay. I could look up this function to see that, um, yeah, this function converts a string into an array. Um, what does that mean? A string is, you know, a bunch of text. An array is um, a list. And a really good example is right here. So in this example, string is hello space friend and this array, this it's actually creating two arrays, but in this example here, um, it's splitting up the string and the array ends up looking like this. It's taking one, two, three, four, well, 12 positions and assigning a character to each position in order. 
So that's pretty cool. You can use this function to break down a phrase into its granular elements, into the characters. And then we can evaluate these characters individually and then figure out how to map letters to them. So let's take a look at how that might work. Um, this is handy dandy, print R. So let's go back to our code. If I take this phrase and split it up, <clears throat> and then, and I just use that function print R, let's try this. Uh, banana. Okay, so um, here we are, and we're, I've typed in banana, and it is bringing the phrase in, splitting it up, and then printing the array that's been assigned. And here it is. First position in the array is B, A, N, A, N, A. So that's pretty cool. That works. Um, I can already see an issue that's going to come up, and the issue is whether the letter is capitalized or lowercase, um, because I'm guessing that the sign language for B doesn't care whether the B is capitalized or not capitalized. So. Um, <clears throat> We're going to have an issue if there's a capital B or a lowercase b to check that against our graphics. Because I don't think, um, I think what I'm planning to do here is the following. At this point, once I have, <clears throat> um, break the phrase into characters stored in an array. Once I've created this array of the characters, I'm going to parse through the array and map the characters to graphics. And I'm going to do that right here. Um, but I want to create one graphic for the B, whether it's capitalized or not. So I think what I need to do before before I break the phrase into characters, is I'm going to convert the phrase to all lowercase letters. Um, to facilitate the character matching rules. Okay, so to do that, there's another PHP um, function and it's called uh, basically it's converting st a string to lowercase and it's called string to lower okay so so far in these steps we're picking up the um, incoming phrase from the form, turning everything into lowercase letters, and then we're splitting it up. So it looks like this now. Let's save this. Um, if I go to my page, and it's broken. Why is that? Okay, because of this. Let's take that out. All right. So if I type in apple, I see nothing. Let's get that print back in. Okay, let's try it again. You can see in the array report, here's the A, the P, the P, the L, the E, just as we expect. But if I type in capital 
Apple, you'll see that um, the array report has everything in lowercase. It's because of this line here that has taken everything that I've that I'm sending into the form and lowercasing it. Okay, banana. There we go. It's just turned everything into lowercase. So there's nothing that's going to be uppercase um, when I get into my logic here. And hopefully soon it will become clear why this is important. So here we are. We're going to now do something with this array. Um, and since we have a whole bunch of characters now that we get to evaluate, um, I'm going to write some code so that I can figure out if, if I can assign a picture to it. Um, it's gonna look like this. Um, let's say I have the character. The character is whatever character we are looking at. Um, <clears throat> we'll just call it character. Um, what I need to do is use another function and it's to check if a file exists. So I'm going to check for a graphic for the character. Um, file exists. Okay. Uh, then my results. Should I call it results? Mm, that's fine. I'm sort of just thinking out loud, coding out loud right now. So let me just write a bunch of stuff and then I'll explain what's going on. Um, but it's useful to kind of see, uh, kind of see how maybe we might be thinking in code, um, just sort of problem solving or designing, designing, problem solving, maybe it's kind of the same thing. <clears throat> okay, else? Okay, so I've written some very basic code here. Um, just making some notes to myself. <clears throat> um, but my check would be something like this. Um, we're going to say that the character is, uh, you know, whatever character in the array we're evaluating. So if we're looking at the second position of banana, then the character would be A. So we're gonna look for a file name um, that's just going to be called a.jpg. The designer is going to um, create a photo for each one and just name them. I think we'll we'll see if this is actually what happens. But I have to create some kind of code for uh, to support this concept somehow. So I'm just going to assume that at this point. So this code here says if. Um, If the character uh, file exists, then it's going to return a number one. Um, and so if that one is returned, it does exist, then I'm, then I'm going to build a results file that adds the image for that character into the results file. Um, and that's what this dot equals means. It means I'm going to do this again and again and again in this results variable potentially is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, but if the file doesn't exist, if this file doesn't equal one, in other words, if it doesn't exist, it's gonna equal zero, then we're gonna do nothing, okay? So this is a good little um, solid little test check. It's going to look for a character. Um, and if it doesn't exist, it's gonna pass it. If it's going to exist, it's going to assign the graphic. So 
we need this to work for every single character in the array. And to do that, I'm going to wrap this whole thing, embed it into um, a looping statement. And the PHP looping statement is for each. Um, <clears throat> as character. So this would be the format of this statement. This for each statement is um, basically this. So I'm going to take the phrase that's been created up here. Um, and then I'm going to take each element in that array that's been created by this code. Um, and each element in the array is going to be called a character. So now if I take this code and place it in here, let's just indent it all so it's easier to see. Um, this PHP code is now setting us up to loop through every character in this array over and over and for each one of these characters in this array, it's going to do this. Okay, so it's going to check. So let's set something up here. Character is equal to um, character plus JPEG. label all this. Figure out how to best write these notes here. Okay. Okay, so this is assuming that the uh, graphics are going to be JPEGs and they're all going to be named properly. So it's going to be lowercase character dot JPEG, for instance. Um, and they would be located right here, um, right in the same level of the, uh, the file. Uh, and, and if it exists, then it's going to write it, write the file name to the results. And if it's not, if it doesn't exist, it's going to do nothing. Um, that might be all we need to do. So I'm going to take this results and change the output here. Okay. So let's save this and refresh this page. See if the page breaks at all. Okay, the page is not breaking. Let's type in something here, Apple. At this point, um, Basically, I'm just hoping it doesn't break. Um, if it doesn't break, then I'm gonna give a little shout out to PHP, um, a little yay, and then proceed to build this out, but it actually shouldn't do anything. Um, and there you go, it's not doing anything. Why is that not doing anything? Well, I've written all this code so that it does something, but really it needs, it needs these um, JPEGs. Um, in there in order to do something because I've set it up so that it's going to do nothing if it can't find a match, if it can't find a graphic, a JPEG that fits the character um, that has been broken up in this phrase array. So let's go create a... Um, <clears throat> A graphic. I'm just gonna go Google a sign language. Here it is. Okay, that's an A. Just gonna grab it. Hopefully it's a JPEG.
Oh, that's a gif. Okay. A gif. Excuse me. Well, I wonder if there's a whole bunch that are GIF files. Here's a B. Let's see what this is. It's also a GIF. All right. Well, maybe I'll change this to GIF because if I do this, save that, I can actually test this. A and B are here. Okay. So back to this page. If I type in Apple, whoa. Nothing happens. Let's just do this. Results. Results. Let's see if I can see something in the report. Okay, actually something's happening. Ah, I see it is working. It's just so huge. Okay, so this is a good sign. I guess it was working in the beginning, but it was so huge that um, let's see, height seventy-two. Let's just make it small. All right, let's try this again. Apple. All right. So you can see here, um, you know, we have the graphic showing up. We only have one because in Apple, um, the letters are A P P L E, and we've only created a graphic for A. I'm assuming that if I type in banana, let's see what happens. All right, so here's the B, A. Here's another A, here's another A, because um, what this logic here in this code is doing is that if it can't find a letter, it just skips. So this is the B, A. There should be an N here. A, N, A. All right, let's go find an N. Um, N, sign language. So many Ns, so many different styles. Let's do this one. I hope it's a GIF. Uh, it's a PNG, yeah, of course. Um, let's just look for the GIF. Here's a dude, okay. Really? Oh, God. Well... I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to hunt uh, for all these letters SVG. I mean, I feel like we're pretty much done with a code that demonstrates this is going to work. Um, all the graphics are not happening because, you know, they have to get created. So I don't know. I just let me find one more because I'm 
just because. Wow, why is it doing this? See, a GIF should, yeah, here's one. Let's go look at this, because here is cake. Oh, all right. So let's go with this. Oh, is it several different? Let's see, ah, look at this. I found the uh, found the website. Let's see, <laughs> let's just do this. P. Yep, motherload. Great. L. All right, guys, remember that. Remember this URL because it's got everything. So if I do that, grab a couple, then load them up here. Um, C, P, let's go get N. N. Nice. All right. So I've got enough letters here to spell um, Apple. Jeez. In case any of you are wondering, um, it is totally dark in my studio, so I can't even see my keyboard. I'm coding in the dark. Apple. A P P L. Oh, I didn't get the E. Excusez-moi. Let's do banana. Banana. There's banana. Let's get the E. Here's the E. Let's drag it to my desktop. Then bring it into my to my web folder. Let's test it. Up. Apple, hungry now. All right, so um, this code is working. If I happen to type in apple banana, does this. If I type in something that doesn't exist, um, mango, boom, these letters that don't have a graphic just do not get represented. Um, so, I think this is enough for this coding session. We have demonstrated, um, you know, proof of concept of this concept. We're doing this, um, and we're addressing these interactive elements um, in our code. The designer will probably, you know, look at this and get some ideas and come up with some new. Um, uh, new components to the concept and, and new definitions in, in the whole interactive um, design. You know, you could just evolve the code from here. It's really actually not too complicated, just a couple lines of PHP to generate um, this information and a couple lines of HTML. So um, yeah, I think this is we can call this a successful coding session. I will put a title on this um, and I'll upload it to GitHub. X. Okay, so that's it for this coding session. Um, we've used PHP to create a sign language translation app. Um, the very basic proof of concept that 
can be further developed with some innovative design um, and and with some original artwork. All right. Thanks a lot.